grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Gospel just read, taken from St. Mark, chapter 9. So it's quite a contrast, isn't it? Jesus tells them that he is about to die, so obviously they are going to argue about who is the greatest. There it is. In the midst of our Lord's ministry, as he has set his face to Jerusalem, as he is preparing to die for the sins of the world, his disciples are trying to figure out what the pecking order is going to be when he dies. But that is kind of the way things seem to work in the world. Sacrifice, love, caring for the neighbor, these things are not shiny and impressive. They don't get a lot of traction in the news, do they? What gets traction is who is the greatest. Who is the best? It doesn't matter if you're talking about sports or politics, or whatever else it might be. We want to know who is the best all the time. I think in some ways this kind of follows from the very famous and kind of popular idea of follow your passion. If you were to go to a high school guidance counselor or if you were to sit in on a motivational speaker seminar, you're probably going to hear at some point or another those words. Follow your passion. Figure out what you love and do more and more and more of that. But it's weird because in the Bible, following your passion is called sin. It's kind of awkward, isn't it? Now, I don't mean figuring out what you love and, this, and, and want to do best is bad, obviously. But at the heart of it, if my goal is to follow what I want, that is sin. That is at the very heart of the matter. This is why James says in chapter 3, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? We are always kind of at war with ourselves. We are always at war with the desires of our hearts and the desire that is given to us by God in our baptism. How do I reconcile these two things? And that isn't, of course, just a career sort of question. That is an every single day sort of question. How do I figure out what I am to do to live my life. What is your desire? What is your passion? What is it that really drives everything that you believe, say, and do? At the heart of the matter, of course, is the fact that our passions, our desires, our soil with sin. Left to themselves, our passions are much like that passion fruit of the garden, which Adam and Eve took of and ate, and their desires brought them death. But there is a different kind of desire, a different kind of passion that looks outside of yourself that looks outside of what it is that I want, what it is that is going to make me happy. And that's called love. Love it seeks not its own, but looks for the good of those around us. Now this is why Jesus' disciples are so confused. He tells them in what sounds like really plain language, I'm going to be betrayed, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to be killed, and on the third day I'm going to rise again from the dead. What 
text says, they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. Love, you see, at the end of the day, is a mystery. Just as the gospel is a mystery. That love, love born of seeing in this other person God himself. Seeing that in this little child, as Jesus put it, is Christ. In that one who is in me before you, there is Christ. That love, well, that love doesn't actually come from in here. It's from there. It comes from our Lord. It comes from his death and resurrection. It comes from what God gave to you in holy baptism. That is a new kind of desire. A new kind of passion. A passion that is not irrational, that doesn't just make us want to act on instinct like the beast, but rather a passion, a love that is born from God himself. Sacrifice and love will never really be understood by the world. They will look at the things that you do as meaningless, a waste of time, whatever it might be, the little things, the big things, the world can't get this, just like the disciples could not understand Jesus' death until after he rose from the dead. But beloved, Christ is at work for you, loving you to death and life again for him. And Christ is at work through you, using you as his instrument in the world to love the world, to show the world who it really is in God. Rejoice that God has loved the world to death and life again, and that God uses even you and me, the least, to do the greatest of all his works, the salvation of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We rise.